Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Gallic Gun Toys and thank you for joining me in what is part 3 of our Dragon Ball uh, collectible storage uh, run through. Okay so I'm going to move all this out of the way so we can jump into it so we're not dragging up a heap of time on uh, me rambling. So first one, uh, go tanks. If you caught part two, I'm pretty sure uh, the trunks that he comes with was uh, pretty sure he was in part two. So yeah, a uh, nice little go tan. Uh, here we have. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a bootleg. Yeah, that's a bootleg. Uh, Gohan, but I never got the uh, original. Never got another original. Uh, sorry, uh, I did cut the cape off as well because I like uh, that look. I liked that look a little bit more when I was 13 or however old I was in 2001, 2002 when that came out. Like 2002. So, uh, the only other bootlegs I have is that and the King Kai that was in uh, part one or two. I can't remember. I've gone through so many of these figures and unbagged and rebagged so many of them, guys. It's uh, been a little bit ridiculous. So, I am feeling uh, a little bit of fatigue now because I've got everything here and then I've still got uh, a heap more to get to. So here we've got Evil Boo, and if you've been following the uh, these as I've been putting them out, I have mentioned uh, sometimes they seem to just nail these really obscure characters a lot more than, say, the uh, all the main characters that they do. So this Evil Boo is just really really nice uh, it has a really really good face uh, right up there with that Spopovich and Fleet Fleet we uh, mentioned in a previous video and here is uh, the trunks now if you're wondering why this one's metallic this one actually came with I believe it was ah yeah sorry it's the time machine uh, time machine trunks. So this one came with the Irwin, pretty sure it's Irwin, uh, the Irwin time machine. Okay, moving on to the next one. So we start moving along a bit quicker. I'm gonna open so we can speed it along, guys. I'm gonna open up a few more and just do it all at once. Okay, so here we have Vegeta. Oh, Another one that's discolored. Uh, if you noticed, if uh, you caught the last part, I did also mention my Android uh, 18 had significantly faded uh, from being in, just sitting in storage, and Vegeta has also faded. Uh, not so noticeable on the back, but on the front, uh, he's quite a bit darker there and quite a bit darker up here. But his arms and legs have stayed the nice vibrant blue that he is. Now that's a real shame because this was always one of my uh, favorite Vegetas. Because I think this came out right around the Android Saga. And it's based on, you know, Android Saga Vegeta. And yeah, that's that's a little bit of a shame. I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit disappointed by that. To see that a few of these haven't held up. Uh, sitting in storage for three years So here's GT trunks now These GT figures are really just the worst. Sorry guys Are just the worst of the worst. Uh, they're absolutely horrible a good chunk of them. They're completely disproportionate As you can see they just the heads seem way too big and it's almost comical looking next to a uh, normal trunks figure that's actually a few years older um, here we have Super Saiyan Goku in his uh, battle armor from when he's training in the hyperbolic time chamber 
And yeah, like I've mentioned in the previous parts of uh, these videos, guys, you know, they did do these really obscure characters or uh, outfits that didn't appear for too long or uh, weren't that relevant. Like, I don't think that was that relevant. And I haven't really heard people screaming for uh, figures of that version of Goku. Uh, so here we've got Chi-Chi. Actually, now that I think about it, that is another bootleg as well, along with the King Kai and the uh, Gohan in the back there, this one. Uh, here we have a little Gohan. Came out around the same time as the GT figures. But this one came with a little Shenron, uh, with a Shenron figure that was about... Uh, Probably about seven or eight inches tall. It was just like a soft, uh, soft, ho soft hollow figure, but still, um, it wasn't too bad. I'm pretty sure he came with like seven Dragon Balls. And they also did a Kid Goku version, uh, GT Kid Goku, with the Black Star Dragon Balls and Black Star. Shenron, so the just the same Shenron figure, just painted red, uh, which was kind of cool. Uh, I actually have the GT Shenron, but not the Goku, and I have the sorry, uh, the Gohan here, but not the Green Shenron. I got rid of the Green Shenron. Okay, so quickly move that out of the way. Okay. So, next one we have is another GT one that looks almost like something out of South Park. This Gogeta. Um, I don't know why. It just it gives off a real South Park vibe to me. Um, I just, I find these GT ones just so comical. They, they've gone so well with figures, Jacks. Like, their Dragon Ball figures weren't the greatest. The faces sometimes quite questionable. But they were still good figures, you know. Uh, better than Irwin in uh, some regard, in quite a few regards. Uh, like this older Goku. Cool Goku, but they just... I don't think they'd quite learnt how to get that, that hair right. But still, cool figure. Uh, I actually remember borrowing one of these off a friend uh, when I was a kid and I snap I broke it uh, by accident while I was playing with it and ended up having to fix it by putting a screw up through there and then gave him that back and gave him a pick of any of my Dragon Ball figures that he wanted because I'd broken his figure which is the right thing to do you break something of someone else's you replace it or you uh, you find a way to make it right and make them happy uh, because you've damaged something that's precious to them and that was something that I felt really bad about and uh, luckily my friend was actually quite uh, forgiving because I'm pretty sure he was happy he got to keep his figure and he got uh, I'm pretty sure my energy blasting trunks I had at the time uh, we've already actually looked at that figure but that was one of my favourites, and yeah, I'm pretty sure he scored that off me. Uh, so, here we have Mecha Freezer. Now, this is what I'm talking about with Jax, uh, some of their later stuff. Now, the GT stuff, in my opinion, is quite dog shit. But then you have this, and this is beautiful. This is just amazing. Like, look at this guy. He's beautiful. Beautiful version of Cyborg Freezer. Uh, I I love this figure. I haven't seen this figure in over three years, but just looking at it, it is it is beautiful. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to keep this one aside and give this guy a clean up because he might actually uh, he might actually deserve a place in my collection here at home and not in my storage because yeah, just wow, wow, really really cool. Okay, so we're getting a little bit long-winded, as I tend to do, and especially during 
uh, this series of videos, guys. So I do apologise for that. So we're going to start trying to move on a little bit quicker so we can finish part 3 and get on to part 4. Because I have bags and totes and just stuff everywhere and it's a bit of a nightmare. So here we've got the Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Uh, once again, GT figure, a bit built. There we go, we've lost lost some stuff. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so yeah, just not the greatest. Like The articulation's not bad, but the likeness is pretty horrible. And then you have an obscure character, like uh, Nova Shenron here. Let's move the camera up so we can see him. Now, Nova is quite uh, valuable, quite sought after. I picked him up for $50 in a record store in uh, Brisbane, here in Australia, uh, probably well, well over 10 years ago, probably about 11 years ago. Uh, I bought him boxed and opened him up straight away to put him on display. And then years later, found out that he's worth about 350 bucks as is, well, he was at the time. This was probably about five or six years ago probably about five or six years ago, uh, and he was, he was worth about $350 at the time. Uh, I'm not too sure what he's going for now, but I know a carded version was going anywhere from $700 to $1,000, uh, so I was a little bit regretful that I hadn't kept that in the box, but at the end of the day, that's not what I collect for. I collect for the love of the figures, not for... Uh, hoping that it'll go up and it's an investment i will buy things as an investment very rarely but most of the time if i buy something i'm buying it for me to open to enjoy to appreciate uh this guy i did pretty much take him out of the box and just leave him uh, as is i've never really played around with him a lot especially uh, after finding out that he's quite valuable uh, but he is one i picked up uh a lot uh, a lot later uh, in my teens probably more into my adulthood and more in the time where I was more collecting things and just opening them and putting them on a shelf opposed to messing around with them a bit like I tended to do in my uh, <clears throat> earlier teens as embarrassed as I am to admit it to you guys so here we have Garlic Jr another nice little obscure character that I feel they really nailed if this camera will focus there you can see June garlic there and he has a little cape that I don't have him displayed with because when he was on display he took up a lot of space and he also comes with this little <clears throat> bobble thing here and that's meant to be Kami in his uh, in his little jar. <clears throat> okay. Sorry guys, I know this is taking forever, but this is a bit of a nightmare to get through with everything bagged up. And uh, I would like to just unbag everything and just start an assembly line for all the videos and just do it that way. But unfortunately, if you've seen my, uh, where I'm working out of here in my uh, bedroom slash collection room, uh, there's not a great deal of room, so I've got to kind of try and break this up as best I can. So here we have Super Saiyan Gohan, pretty horrible looking face. Uh, not a terrible figure, but not great either. There's nothing really going on. Uh, they did redo this figure with gold hair and release him with a bike, I'm pretty sure. It was like a capsule corp hover bike or something with lights and sounds uh, just from the vehicle line and we got Videl here another instance of just really obscure character very very nicely done details all there and spot on and she looks great <clears throat> And it's it's really these obscure characters, uh, the, like the lesser lesser made action figures, I should say, like uh, 
you know, not the Gokus, not the Vegetas, not the Gohans, you know, the characters that, you know, aren't regulars in the series, uh, they are probably the ones that come out the best, like even Birda here, uh, he looks pretty good, you know, to this day, he was one of my favourites as a kid, because he was just, he was so impressive looking, and just so big, and, uh, yeah, I just I've I've always appreciated action figures since I was since I was really young and when I was you know 12 or 13 or whatever when this guy came out I really 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 dug the just the look and the overall aesthetic uh just yeah a really really nice figure Okay, we're running out of room here and we're running out of time here because I'm Getting a little bit carried away here, guys. So, I'm going to move Nova out of the way so we can get to the last big one. And then we'll move on to a heap of the little ones. So, another obscure character. We seem to be getting all of them in part three. And I don't know what I'm getting because I'm just kind of pulling handfuls of bags out of the box just before I start filming. So, Yakon looks really good. He's got uh, retractable claws, if I can... Yeah, so he's got the retractable claws, he looks really good, he's got the margin symbol there, and yeah, damn, he he looks good, and might be staying here in the collection, maybe I'll make room for him, and some of the others on the Ben Pestro shelf, I'm not sure, but we'll uh, see how we go with that, but definitely a very, very solid figure, and a very very large figure at that uh, so here we have the cookie the Deborah cookie uh, that comes with Margin Boo nice little accessory now this these are all from my accessory bag so sorry the videos are running a bit long guys I'm just doing these last little things there's about seven or eight little things in this accessory bag so we'll get to it and we'll move along and wrap it up so here we've got the turtle Roshi's turtle that comes with the Roshi figure. The uh, Kamikaze ghost that came with... Uh, it was the Super Saiyan Go tanks we looked at in one of the last parts of this video uh, that we're currently doing. So part one or part two. Uh, we got B. I'm pretty sure he came with Margin Boo. Uh, sorry guys, the camera just does not want to focus. Come on. There we go. There's B. Uh, so yeah, nice little representation of Margin Boo's dog. And then we've got Bubbles. Nice little Bubbles. And then we've got Poir. Ginyu the Frog. Uh, this is probably my favourite accessory of all. Uh, this guy came with the Namek Bulma. I'm not even sure I have that Bulma, but I have the Frog. Uh, I got that from a second-hand store or from the markets or something. I saw that and scooped it up with whatever else I was buying because I knew exactly what that was and I wanted it badly um here we've got Chobi, little dinosaur he came with videl i'm pretty sure he was videl's accessory uh, so that's a cool little accessory and we got cell jr he came with cell we haven't looked at that cell yet but we will be getting to him in the next part or if i can't get through the rest of them the uh part after that and here we have a little Corrin. And here we have the... It's meant to be the Margin, Boo, Margin Boo's uh, ball that he gets sealed in. I think this comes with Babbity. But to me, it looks more like it should be the, uh, the egg uh, that Cell uh, regressed to. To get into the time machine so i'm going to wrap it up guys because we're nearly at 20 minutes here so thank you very much for joining me in part three and uh i will see you next time for part four 
Bye for now, guys.